we start with the third topic of the CNS, nothing but the brainstem. It is located between the cerebrum above and spinal cord below. Now, it provides a pathway or track running between the higher and the lower neural centers. It consists of midbrain, pons and medulla. Each region is about an inch in the length. Microscopically, it consists of deep gray matter surrounded by the white matter fibrous tracts. It provides automatic behavior necessary for survival. These are the functions of the brainstem. First we see the functions of the midbrain. Visually, visual and auditory processing reflexes. Second function is fine tuning of the voluntary movement. Functions of the pons. First function is relaxation of the cerebellum. Second function is control of subconscious movement. Then we see the functions of middle oblongata. First function is control of cardiovascular function. Second function is control of respiration. Third function is control of gastrointestinal functions. Then we see the development of the brainstem. The adult human brainstem emerged from the two or three primary vesicles from the of the neural tube. The mesencephalon is the second of the three primary vesicle and does not further differentiate into the secondary vesicle. This will become the midbrain. Mesencephalon is nothing but the midbrain. Third primary vesicle, the rhombencephalon, nothing but the hindbrain, will further differentiate into two secondary vesicles. That is metencephalon and the myelencephalon. The metencephalon will become the cerebellum and the pons and the modal, more caudal Myelencephalon is will become the medulla oblongata. This is the development of the brainstem. And then first we start from the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is the direct upward continuation of the spinal cord extending from the foramen magnum to the upper border of the pons. It from the lower part of the brainstem and lies almost vertically in the anterior part of the posterior cranial fossa between the clevis in front and the vallecula of the cerebellum behind. Medulla provides attachment to the last four cranial nerves. The lower part of the medulla like the spinal cord contains the central canal. In the upper part of the medulla which canal widens and moves dorsally to from the lower part of the fourth ventricle. Thus, the medulla is divided into two parts. The lower closer part and the uh, closer part of the medulla and the upper open part of the medulla. In this picture, see this is the midbrain pons and this one is the medulla oblongata. External structure of the medulla oblongata. Most of the inferior region of the brainstem this is the most of the inferior region of the brainstem uh, become the spinal cord at the level of the foramina magnum length is about 3 centimeter width is about 2 centimeter in the upper end surfaces uh, anterior surface uh, shows the series of the fissure uh, it is having anterior surface and posterior surface anterior see this one is the anterior median fissure anterior median fissure same way posterior side also posterior median fissure is present then ventral surface of the middle of oblongata contains pyramid see here here is the pyramids elevation between the anterior median uh, this one is the anterior median fissure here anterior lateral sulcus in between the anterior median fissure and anterior lateral sulcus here Pyramid is present from due to the decussion of the corticospinal fibers. Second one is the olive. So, oval swelling between the oval swelling. This see here is the pyramid and this one is the olive. Oval swelling between the anterior lateral and posterior lateral sulcus half an inch long. This one is the anterior lateral sulcus. This one is the posterior lateral circus in between that olive is present produces by large mass of the gray matter called the inferior inferior olivary nucleus then we see the posterior surface of the medulla oblongata the posterior part of the medulla contains fasciculus gracilis fasciculus 
grasses middly and in rounded elevation uh, called the nucleus gracilis fasciculus cunitus laterally ending in the rounded elevation called the nucleus cunitus fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus posterior part of the medulla from the this from the floor of the fourth ventricle it from the floor of the fourth ventricle this from the floor of the fourth ventricle tuberculum uh, cinerum longitudinal elevation in the lower part of the medulla lateral to the fasciculus cuneatus so no, this one is the posterior surface of the medulla oblongata contains fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cuneatus or nucleus gracilis nucleus cuneatus also from the floor of the fourth ventricle then internal structure of the medulla cross section at the uh, three levels uh, in case of the brain stem uh, always they asked the cross sections uh, here we see the cross section at the three levels first at the pyramidal decussation level of decussation of the pyramid uh, ts of the medulla at the level of decussation of the pyramid see here cross section hmm, you prepare all this diagram because anyone cross section may be asked for short note see here hmm, this is the central canal and central gray matter then this is fasciculus gracilis this one is fasciculus cuneatus this is spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve this one is the dorsal spinocerebellar tract this one is the pinotectal tract this one is the ventral spinocerebellar tract this one is the lateral spinothalamic tract this is nothing but the anterior spinothalamic tract this is spino olivary tract this is the pyramid here we see the decussation of the pyramid lateral cortico spinal tract seen here decussation of the pyramid this is medial long fasciculus this is olio spinal tract is seen uh, vestibulo spinal tract this one is the ventral uh, gray column this is nothing but the rubro spinal tract this one is the reticular formation same spinal uh, tract of the trigeminal nerve and lateral cortic cortico spinal tract seen in the cross section at the level of pyramidal decussation then uh, second section at the level of laminuscal decussation cavity central canal nucleus nucleus gracilis nucleus cunitus spinal nucleus of uh, cranial nerve accessory nucleus hypoglossal nucleus motor tract pyramids motor tracts and sensory tracts all this seen in the cross section at the level of laminuscal decussation see first here see the fasciculus gracilis then uh, nucleus gracilis this is nucleus cunitus fasciculus cunitus the, this is accessory cunitus nucleus this one is the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve and nucleus of the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve this one is the internal arcuate fibers this one is the dorsal spinocerebellar tract this one is the lateral spinothalamic tract this one is the ventral spinothalamic tract this is nothing but the ventral spinothalamic tract this one is the spino olivary tract this is nothing but the medial longitudinal bundles this one is the medial laminiscus this one is the pyramid this one is the arcuate nucleus this one is the tectospinal tract this one is the medial accessory olivary nucleus this one is the inferior olivary nucleus vestibulo uh, spinal tract rubro spinal tract nucleus ambiguous and here show the hypoglossal nucleus dorsal motor nucleus of vagus this one is the nucleus of solitary tract all this seen in the cross section at the level of laminuscal decussation then cross section at the level of inferior olivary olivary nucleus here level olivar olives 
inferior cerebellar peduncle cavities fourth ventricle here uh, and these are the nucleus and motor and motor tracts and sensory tracts cross section at the level of olive we see first one is the solid uh, solitary tract and the uh, its nucleus uh, vestibular nucleus inferior cerebellar peduncle uh, cochlear nucleus dorsal spino uh, cerebellar uh, spino cerebellar tract vent ventral spino cerebellar tract then lateral spinothalamic and spinotectal tract this is the anterior spinothalamic tract and the spinal nucleus and the tract of the trigeminal nerve this one is the medial lemniscae arcuate uh, nucleus medial accessory olivary nucleus vestibular uh, tract dorsal accessory olivary nucleus lateral reticular nucleus rubrospinal tract inferior cerebellar peduncle uh, ponto bulbar body uh, nucleus ambiguous here tecto spinal tract hypoglossal nucleus dorsal vagal nucleus and medial longitudinal fasciculus all this seen in the cross section at the level of olive and then we see the blood supply of the medulla arterial supply medullary branch of the vertebral artery medullary branch of the vertebral arteries then medullary branch of the basilar artery posterior inferior cerebellar artery and anterior spinal artery venous drainage basilar venous plexus inferior petrosal sinus and occipital sinus these are the applied anatomy lateral medullary syndrome uh, on side of the lesion pain numbness impaired sensation over the one half of the face fifth nerve nucleus ataxia restiform body cerebellar hemisphere and spinal cerebellar tracts are involved nystagmus diplopia vertigo nausea vomiting and vestibular nucleus horner syndrome dysphagia and paralysis of the palate focal cord uh, diminished the gag reflex fibers of the ninth and tenth nerve then um, medial medullary or uh, digerin syndrome on the side of the lesion paralysis with atrophy of the half of the tongue and twelfth nerve on the side of the opposite lesion paralysis of the arm and the leg sparing face impaired tactile and proprioceptive sense over one half of the body pyramidal tract and medial lemniscae in the uh, middle of lungata uh, short note may be asked only on the cross section at the level of lemniscae we see at the level of pyramidal decussation and uh, last section that is the at the level of the olive this three short notes may be asked mainly asked a question on the fourth ventricle many times asked short note on the uh, uh, draw a diagram of the floor of the fourth ventricle we see the fourth ventricle in another one lecture now we uh, let us start with the lecture on the pons see already you understand that this one is the mid brain pons and medulla middle already we see now we see the pons and the pons shows a convex anterior surface with prominent transversely running fibers and these fibers collect to from the bundle the middle uh, cerebellar peduncles the trigeminal nerve emerges from the anterior surface at the junction between the pons and the cerebellar peduncle the anterior surface of the pons is marked in the uh, midline by a shallow groove the sulcus basilaris shallow groove by sulcus basilaris uh, we, uh, on which lodges the basilar artery this uh, subdivide it subdivided into ventral part and the dorsal part the ventral part of the pons contains pontine nucleus ventral part contain the pontine 
nucleus receives the corticospontine fibers from the parental temporal parietal occipital lobe of the cerebrum the parent fibers from the transverse fibers of the pons vertically running corticospinal and corticopontine fibers and transversely running fibers arising in the pontine nucleus then we see the this one is the dorsal part of the pons the dorsal part of the pons may be regarded as a continuation of the part of the medulla behind the pyramids superiorly continuous with the tegmentum of the midbrain occupied predominantly by the reticular formation posterior surface helps to from the floor of the fourth ventricle the dorsal part is bounded laterally by the inferior cerebellar peduncle in the lower part of the pons and superior cerebellar peduncle in the upper part of the pons then ts or transverse section at the lever of lower part of the pons see this one is transverse section through the lower part of the pons here what we see rubro spinal tract then this one is the superior olivary nucleus this one is the abducens nucleus then this one is the superior olivary nucleus inferior cerebellar peduncle same vestibular nucleus here spinal nucleus and tract of the trigeminal nerve here dorsal cochlear nucleus ventral cochlear nucleus this one is the ventral spinal cerebellar tract this one is the lateral lemniscus this one is the central tegmental tract this one is the central tegmental tract then trigeminal lemniscus this one is the lateral spinothalamic tract and the spinotractal tract this one is the anterior spinothalamic tract this one is the corticospinal and corticonuclear fibers this these are the trapezoid bodies in between that trapezoid body and the nucleus and here we see the medial lemniscus here transverse section through the upper part of the pons in transverse section at the upper part here show the central tegmental tract this one is the fourth ventricle here medial longitudinal bundles tectospinal tract rubro spinal tract motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve and here main sensory nucleus of trigeminal nerve and this shows the lateral lemniscus spinal lemniscus trigeminal lemniscus middle lemniscus and trapezoid body corticospinal and cortico nuclear fibers pontine nucleus and middle cerebellar peduncle all this seen in the transverse section through the upper part of the pons blood supply arterial supply that is pontine branches these are the pontine branches of the basilar artery superior cerebellar artery superior cerebellar artery anterior inferior cerebellar artery and venous drainage is basilar venous plexus inferior petrosal sinus classical pontine syndromes are there millard gubler syndrome pavlis syndrome and raymond syndrome these are the applied anatomy in the pons also uh, ask the question on this uh, given through cross sections at the level of upper part of the pons and at the lever of lower part of uh, pons these two diagrams you are prepare for short note then we see the uh, last point is the midbrain for new topic uh, midbrain connects pons and the cerebrum with forebrain uh, it connect the pons and the cerebrum with the forebrain it is a so uh, shortest brain stem not more than 2 cm in the length lies in the posterior cranial fossa uh, for descriptive purpose divide into dorsal tectum and right and left cerebral peduncle each cerebral peduncle see here hmm? this one is the midbrain 
is cerebral peduncle divides further into ventral crust cerebrae and dorsal tegmentum by a pigmented lamina that is substantia nigra substantia nigra cerebral peduncle contains descending fibers that go to the cerebellum via the pons descending pyramidal tract and running through the midbrain is hollow cerebral aqueduct is there which connect the third and the fourth ventricle of the brain also seen the superior colliculi that control reflex movement of the eye head and the neck in response to the visual stimuli then two pairs of the inferior colliculi that controls reflex movement of the head neck trunk in response to the auditory stimuli superior and inferior colliculi separates by a cruciform sulcus superior colliculi larger and darker than the inferior colliculi the difference in the color due to the superficial neurons in the superior colliculi internal structure of the midbrain cross section at the level of inferior colliculi and these are the superior colliculi transverse section at the level of superior colliculi here seen the cerebral aqueduct this one is the superior colliculi this here seen the oculomotor nucleus here this one is the red nucleus spinothalamic tract and the medial lemniscus substantia nigra this one is the crus cerebrae and this one is the interpeduncular fossa so, uh, superior colliculi substantia nigra oculomotor nucleus red nucleus mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve and edengar westphal nucleus all this seen in the tra tra transverse section at the level of superior colliculi these are the tracts seen motor and the sensory cortico spinal cortico nuclear uh, temp, uh, temporo pontine fronto pontine middle longitudinal fasciculi uh, sensory lateral trigeminal sp uh, spinal uh, medial lemniscus and decussation of the superior cerebellar peduncle then ts of the brain at the level of superior colliculi see here see cerebellar aqueduct centrally then lateral spinothalamic and spinotectal tract trigeminal lemniscus then the medial lemniscus this one is the temporopontine and uh, parietopontine and uh, uh, occipitopontine fibers here she is the central tegmental tract corticospinal and corticonuclear fibers for leg arm and head and frontopontine fibers these are the ventral tegmental decussation uh, substantia nigra red nucleus and dorsal tegmental decussation medial longitudinal fasciculi uh, and these are the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and inferior brachium and pretectal nucleus and superior colliculi transverse section at the level of inferior colliculi substantia nigra trochlear nucleus mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve all this seen in the uh, cross section at the level of inferior colliculi uh, and these are the motor and sensory tracts in cortico spinal tract cortico nuclear temporopontine frontopontine medial longitudinal fasciculi uh, decussation of the rubro spinal tract sensory trigeminal and the uh, spinal and medial tract ts of the midbrain at the level of inferior colliculi all these are seen that is central gray matter this one is the aqueduct here mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve uh, trochlear nucleus medial longitudinal fasciculi uh, tectospinal tract this is the inferior brachium lateral lemniscus spinal lemniscus trigeminal lemniscus central uh, tegmental tract medial lemniscus crus cerebrae decussion of the superior cerebellar peduncle and rubro spinal tract and fronto pontine fiber all this seen in the transverse section through the inferior colliculus blood supply of the midbrain that is arterial supply posterior cerebral artery 
superior cerebellar artery and venous plexus by basal vein and great cerebral vein and classical midvein syndrome is weber syndrome claudius syndrome and bendix syndrome these are the applied anatomy weber syndrome nothing but the third nerve palsy on the ipsilateral side due to the involvement of oculomotor nerve uh, uh, facilis hemiplegia uh, due to the superior cerebral peduncle involvement claudius syndrome uh, due to the third also third nerve palsy and bendix syndrome due to the uh, third nerve palsy only see there dorsal midvein syndrome is there here uh, supranuclear up gauge palsy large pupils with uh, light near uh, dissociation leg retraction normal uh, dog gauge converge weakness convergence of retraction nystagmus and mid brain also they ask the question on the cross section at the level of superior colliculi at the level of inferior colliculi also important that is the red nucleus and the substantia nigra may be asked for short note i will give uh it oh, short notes okay thank you